Chida's first book, An Inquiry into the Good, Follow the Spirit, and to some extent the writing styles of William James and Henry Bergson by taking experience for his point of departure. As he retold that work, however, he came to feel that it ultimately seemed too psychologistic and mystical. So he turned his attention from the American and French thinkers to the German neo Kantians. Like those German philosophers, Nishida wanted to develop the overall structure of rationality, the logic through which he could then explain the experiential process of judging and analyzing. Although he found the neo Kantian philosophies inadequate throughout most of his later writings, except perhaps the very last essays, known as his last writings, he continued to seek the holy grail of logical systemization, hoping to find the formal structures for understanding the kind of experiences that had interested him in an inquiry into the good. To that extent, Nishida's quest was in some ways analogous with Husserl's phenomenological efforts to develop a pure science, a reine Wissenschaft, of consciousness. His role was a cartographer of consciousness, trying to map with scientific objectivity the nooks and crannies of every form of consciousness. Heidegger, however, was not interested in continuing his soul's cartography. He realized that her soul's maps could be a treasure map, showing the route through the ticket of beings, scientists, to the clearing of being itself. Sein. Heidegger's project was not to develop more Husserlian categories, but rather to use those categories to reach authentic existence. This quest undoubtedly had a profound impact on Nishitani. He saw that Nishida's logic did not so much need further development, but rather application to the most profound problems of human existence. Like Heidegger's reaction to Israel, Nishitani turned Nishida's philosophy into a more explicitly spiritual quest for exist existential authenticity. The aforementioned, aforementioned book, translated as Religion and Nothingness, was entitled originally Shukiyo Towa Anika, What is Religion? And, it, and its title fits this model well. Nishitani also published a series of lectures on Dogen, wrote about Meister Eckhart, compared Shiran and Western spiritual views of temporality and fate, and so on. Further, as Heidegger's later writings broke the pattern of the dry scientific writing style of Israel, Nishitani also tried to write in a more existential manner. However, more like the uh, Actually, more like the French and American style of Nishida's maiden work than his later more Germanic, Germanic rhetoric. As the topic of experience again came to the fore in Kyoto school philosophy, Nishitani never hesitated to draw explicitly on the traditional philosophies of East Asia in his writing. So much as Heidegger drew on and celebrated the ancient philosophers of the Western tradition, especially the pre-Socratics. Tanabe Hajima, with Nishida his senior, Tanabe was the other major first generation member of the Kyoto school. As this book explains, we find two phases in Tanabe's thinking. After his early work in Kant and the philosophy of science, Tanabe turned to the structure of the logic that, that Nishida had been developing. According to Tanabe, Nishida had fallen into a problem that he had inherited from Hegel's logic, namely construing the dialectical dialectic in terms of two moments, the universal and the individual, or the genus and individual. Missing was the level of the specific or the species. Or human existence, Tanabe claimed, is most manifest not in the dynamic between our universal humanity and our individuality, within our specificity, the medial plane, that is the home of culture, ethnicity, and society. It is only there that language, though, thought, meaning, and value emerge. 
Indeed, the universal and the individual are abstracted and articulated from this plane. That is, we become individuals in a society or culture and we discover our universal humanity and language and meanings learned within our social and cultural milieu. Tanabe's critique of Nishida's logic had much philosophical merit, but it turned out to be the right idea at the wrong time. Ethnocentrist and jingoistic ideologists quickly appropriated his theory and used it to buttress their idea of the primacy of being Japanese as superseding individual needs or, or any universal morality based in our common humanity. Witnessing the application, misapplication of his ideas transformed into the tragedy of Japanese militarism and its in inevitable defeat. Tanabe's underwent a repentance or change of heart, metanoia in Greek, zange in Japanese. The work of one of his great graduate students at Kyoto School, Takeyoshi Yoshinori, turned Tanabe to a deeper appreciation of the philosophy of Shinran, the aforementioned founder of the Pure Land tradition of Shin Buddhism. Inspired by that pre-modern Japanese philosopher, Tanabe wrote in his philosophy as metanoics. Because Shinran's philosophy is probably not as well known in the West as Zen philosophy, it might help the reader unfamiliar with that tradition. If I briefly sketch Shinran's theory of human existence as it pertains to the problematic of Tanabe's later philosophy, Shinran maintained that human existence is so embedded in the karmic results of evil that even our attempts to be egoless, rationally objective or altruistic end up being self-deceptions that only need feed the ego further. How can I, Shinran asks, asked, asked, eliminate my ego? If I succeed, has the ego really been eliminated? The only truly good deed is one I do with no self-interest. Yet, when I try to act altruistically, do I not inevitably see myself as a do-gooder, a virtuous person, deserving of enlightenment? Is this not just ego again, albeit in a disguised form? In response to this predicament, Shinran claimed, we must completely relinquish all presumptions but we can reach the wisdom and compassion of enlightenment through our own efforts. To do so, we turn over all agency to a power outside us, no longer trusting ourselves to figure things out, akarai, or to transform ourselves through our own efforts, jiriki, and talents. This Chinyin, fate or true and trusting, turns over an agency to the working of another. The cosmic Buddha Amida. Amida is in itself a measurable light that eliminates our egos, highlighting our karmic habits of self deception and ego serving delusions. As compassion, that light takes the form of a Buddha who establishes a dimension, a pure land, where enlightenment is possible. Once bonds are trust in Amida is complete, therefore the ego dissolves and the rebirth into that pure land is assured. No longer, see, no longer seeing oneself as an I, there is no longer the need to relinquish the self, and there is no need for an Amida to be a personal source of a power to which one surrenders. So, Amida as well disappears into suchness, a spontaneous or natural jinan, working in which there is no individual agency, neither mine or nor Amidas. In light of this medieval Japanese model of metanoia, in Greek or Zange in Japanese, Tanabe argued that philosophy should always recognize its own inherent corruptibility. To the extent a philosophical system is successful, the danger that its success will feed the ego of those who accept the system, supporting delusions of power and grandeur. In its, in its quest for figuring things out and achieving truth, Philosophy loses sight of its limits and assumes the, bad, the, man, the mantle of absolute truth. This absolutizing tendency distorts whatever conventional, limited, limited 
relative truth the philosophy had discovered, making it into a totalizing ideology that denies its all to human finite origins. Therefore, Tanabe argued that a philosophy should integrate an awareness of its own limitations, ex expressly showing how it cannot be abs absolutized. Philosophy can never transcend its provisional and relational status. That is what Tanabe learned from his reading of Shinran. Otsuyi Tetsuro. As Carter points out, depending on the context, Otsuyi can be considered as an outsider, as either, as either an outsider or just beyond the periphery to the Kyoto school proper. He was both personally and philosophically indebted to Nishida and the Kyoto University University Department of Philosophy, where he held his first major academic position. We see his Kyoto school ties most obviously in his idea of the in his use of the idea of nothingness, for example. Yet, in many respects, after he returned from Germany and then took the chair in ethics at the University of Tokyo, his trajectory of interests were ten tangential rather than central to those of the Kyoto school. We are, are interested here, however, mainly in his treatment of pre-modern Japanese thinkers. Watsui had started his career in Japan as the country's foremost specialist in Schopenhauer, Kierkegaard and Nietzsche. In fact, precisely because of those interests, Nishida recommended he spends some time doing research and studi studying in Germany. At about the same time, however, Atsui's father, a physician in the Chinese tradition steeped in Confucian values, argued him not to abandon, abandon his own cultural roots, especially as Japan was undergoing such a radical social and cultural upheaval. Therefore, from the late uh, 20s until his death, at least half of Batsui's writings were analyses of and reflections on traditional Japanese ideas and values. He wrote many volumes on such topics as the history of Japanese ethical ideas, the pragmatic character of early Indian Buddhism, the aesthetics of various traditional Japanese art forms, such as no drama, temple architecture and Buddhist sculpture. His 1926 book, Shaman Dogen, Dogen the Monk, might be considered the single most influential work in modern Japanese philosophy's engagement with traditional Japanese Buddhist philosophy. For the first time, a modern Japanese philosopher had treated, had treated a great Japanese religious thinker not as a saintly figure shrouded in the aura of sectarian veneration, but as a fellow human being driven by philosophical questions. This started a trend in modern Japanese philosophy that continues today. With these few comments in mind about what Japanese philosophers brought with them as they developed modern Japanese philosophy, we can now turn the task over to Bob Carter, who will take us through his entry gate into the Kyoto School. Readers will feel fortunate the readers will feel fortunate, for, fortunate to be led, for, fortunate to be led by such a talented and experienced guide. Thomas P. Kasulis, the Ohio State University.